How do I sum up that fight? Uh, uh, fun. It was a fun fight. <laughs> Robbie's a great puncher. I think I would consider him as like, you know, the, the hardest hitter to deal with. I said congratulations and what are you gonna really say? <laughs> We're talking about the UFC, which goes down in Hamburg, Germany. The fight night card headlined by Josh Barnett and Andre Orlovsky. The co-featured bout, a 205-pound battle. Alexander Gustafsson, I think uh, one of the dark horses in the light heavyweight division, taking on Blokovic, a guy that we've seen mm -hmm. grow in the KSW cage. Hasn't been able to find that success in the UFC. It's just, uh, it seems to be a different animal. For Alexander Gustafsson, you would imagine, kind of rocky confidence right now. However, he shouldn't. Yes, he has three losses in his last four fights, but are, they're really against the best fighters in the world. John Jones, Daniel Cormier, Cormier, and Anthony Johnson. Jones and Cormier, two former champions, and he managed to go five rounds with John Jones. And not only that, there's some people out there that believe he won the fight. You know, uh, often we'll talk about a number of different fights, different weights, different ages, all these things, and you find a common thread. And the thread today is Gustafson and Arlovsky are losing to the top guys. And that must be, for Arlovsky, he's entering the last number of years of his, yep. of his career. But for Gustafson, you're getting right up there and then being stalled, being stopped. And what does that do? There are people who have that experience, get up there, feel what it's like, right at the top, you know? The toughest one of those losses had to be AJ in a stadium in his home. You know, but all of those losses, Conor McGregor lost to Diaz, came back, retooled, learned the lessons of that fight, and came back. That's what Gustafson's looking to do, and that's what he's looking to do against a guy he'll know pretty well. All the European guys yeah. know the other 205ers, you know, and uh, he'll know Blakovic very, very well, but Blakovic is a dangerous guy. That KO of, of Latifi gave you some real insight yeah. to the way that we watched him fight in Poland in KSW Live here on Fight Network like that. And uh, actually, this one's going to be live here on Fight Network 2, which is pretty exciting for us. But uh, you saw insight when when um, Blakovic is changing stances a little bit, offering slightly different looks, making himself a little bit of a mystery as to what he's going to throw. That's when he does his best. And that's what he's got to do against Gustafsson. You know, Gustafsson's a little taller and a little longer, but he's a little taller, a little longer than everybody. So that's just something he's going to need to deal with. But for Blakovic, normally he's that guy. He's True. the guy that has the range that he has that leaner body. His, he, his genetics seem to be different than everybody else. For Alexander Gustafsson, very similar. How is Blokovic going to deal with Alexander Gustafsson? And does Gustafsson, do you believe he plays a conservative game where it's like, this is a must-win mm -hmm. scenario. Blokovic is clearly tough. Nobody knows his name, so I can't take a whole lot of risks because I don't want to get caught. You see how the two match up. Blokovic uh, having more experience than Alexander Gustafsson. However, when you look at the level that Gustafsson's mm -hmm. been at, uh, you can say that he has the better experience, but do you expect a conservative approach from, from Gustafsson, or do you expect him to be very, very aggressive to insert himself back into that mix? I'm expecting him to try to piece up Blackowitz at distance until Blackowitz gets aggressive and then watch for step knees inside. I think you'll see Gustafson when he's aggressive is going to be when Blackowitz pushes forward. Whether that's uppercuts, whether that's step knees, you know, whether that's elbows in tight, I think that's where he's looking to really do the damage. If he doesn't come inside, we'll stay outside all night and just piece him out a little bit on the outside, mess him up, cut him up, whatever we got to do. But if you keep a guy on the outside for any length of time, he doesn't have as much reach advantage over Blackwoods as he's used to, but he's become very good at it, and that fight with John Jones really even yeah, made course. it better. So try to piece him up on the outside. If and when he comes in, that's where you get violent as he penetrates inside. I think that's going to be the game plan for Gustafson. That's a very hard game plan to, to beat. OSP versus John Jones. OSP eventually just, well, I guess I'm going to lose on the outside. Or you get hyper-aggressive, you come in like, uh, like Glover did with John Jones, yeah, yeah. and you get cut up as you push inside. I think that's the prototype here for Gustafson. Do you believe that Gustafson's looking at the bigger picture right now, or is it okay, let's just get back to the UFC, get back into the octagon, get myself comfortable, get myself an important win. This is a very critical victory, critical time for Alexander Gustafson. Just go in there focus on getting the victory, and then down the road worry about where you fit in. Because, I mean, at the end of the day, most of these guys, they're looking like Nathan and Nick Diaz said, Connor said, we're looking for the biggest fights, 
humanly possible. And right now, the f a big fight is not with Jan Blokovic. Yes, if you're a hardcore fan, you understand how, how good this guy is and what type of fight we're going to see. But in order to get the big money fight, don't you have to kind of make sure the audience remembers your type of performance. You know, you know uh, the, the study of the psychology and the mentality of fighting has been something I've been obsessed with, and I got my crew. I got Tracy Trudeau, a, yeah. a, a, a PhD in psychology in Edmonton, and David Klonsky, Dr. David Klonsky, a, a PhD uh, professor at the University of British Columbia, and David Mullins, who I've worked with on our, po our podcast. You talk to any of them, and many coaches, and many stable individuals who look at it, you must not look past this assignment. You can be vaguely aware of it. It can be involved in your long-term goal discussions. But if you think for a moment past Jan Blakovic, oh, I'll beat him and then I'll rematch with AJ. Oh, I'll beat him and I'll rematch with John Jones. You're in a lot of trouble. You will be in a lot of trouble. And uh, we talked about that with Garbrandt going into this last fight yeah. with Mizugaki. He's talking about Cruz, talking about Cruz. Hey, it worked out fine for him. He, it, the situation, so there are examples where it works. But there are lots of examples where you're thinking so far in the future, all of a sudden you find yourself looking up at the lights and now you got four losses in your last five. I want to look at the, the rankings for 205 pounds because you can see just how easy or difficult it is to get to the top two, top three in order for people to be talking about you challenging for the title. And Alexander Gustafson's right there. Uh, I mean, this is a, he has to win this if he still wants to be considered one of the guys at the top of the division the challenge. Well, you can say he is third or fourth if you include Daniel Cormier, the champion, uh, because those are the only guys he's lost to. But yeah, you lose to Jan Blakovic, and we can't make that argument for you anymore. This is an inv incredibly important fight for his future. There's no doubt about it. You'll notice John Jones, the number one contender there. I believe he's still the interim champ, although I think the UFC uh, took him off their rankings, but until we know what's going on. Also, on whatever level you judge this man, and, and he has plenty, he's done plenty, he's been judged for. He's still such an incredible, incredible special athlete. And we got to see him fight AJ, Anthony Johnson, man. John Jones got to see that fight. You got to tune into FN at Saturday, on Saturday at 2 p.m. Eastern, as we break down all the action leading into that main event between Josh Barnett and Andre Orlovsky. It is UFC Fight Night. Tune into FN Saturday at 2 p.m.